and welcome back to the Green Witch Homestead. My onions are ready to harvest and I'm going to show you how I do them. I'm going to go through the process, how I take care of onions. And as you can see here, the bed, it is ready to come out of the ground. Here in the Midwest, the end of June marks the changeover of garden season. We plant a lot of our cool weather crops like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce in early March, late February. And this time of year, they are nearing the end of their lifespan. So a lot of the garden beds get cleared out and a new crop comes in for harvesting in the fall. Here I'm gonna put a new round of cold crops to start from seed inside and they'll go in there again to be ready for a fall harvest. I've already started to pull some of the onions out. Once it does form a bulb, a lot of people get concerned like, how long do I wait? When should I pull it out? Is If I leave it in, is the bulb gonna grow bigger? Because you, you know, you're growing the food, you want the biggest bang for your buck. So with onions, the easy way to tell is as the onion grows, the leaves will start to flop over. You see how the tops have all flopped over like that? That tells me that these guys are almost ready to go. Once the plant gets to the point where all the leaves have flopped over, it's done growing. It's not gonna get a bigger bulb. It's starting to wind itself down and store its nutrients to overwinter so it can put off seeds next year. So what you want to do is you wanna come through and bend them over at the stalk. So basically just about two, three inches above the onion bulb, just bend it over and let them sit like that for a couple days. And then you can come through and harvest them. I, on the other hand, do it just a little bit differently and you can as well. We like to use the greens of the onion. If you do the neck bend method, the greens are gonna die and you're not gonna be able to harvest them and use them. So what I like to do instead is when they get to the stage where their leaves are bending over, I just pull the whole onion and I put them straight to my drying rack. Now I know we've previously talked on how you don't want to grow sets, which are the little onion bulbs. You want to grow starts, which are the ones that look like a little tiny onion, if you're going to do long-term storage. Even when you do the starts, you're still going to be 100% reliant on Mother Nature to keep up her end of the bargain. So this year, I don't know for many people, but at least here in the Midwest, we have had some pretty wonky weather. We've had some really high temperature weeks and then some really low temperature weeks, and it's fluctuated back and forth. If it was like a one day thing, it wouldn't be too bad, but it was literally a week in the hundreds and then a week back down in the fifties and then a week in the hundreds. Unfortunately, what that's done is it has triggered that process in the onion to think that it's gone through winter. As you see here, some of my onions have put off a flower scape. These actually, you can pick this whole thing off and drop it in a salad and eat it. You kinda wanna do it before the flowers open, it tastes better. It's not the end of the world if your onions do go to flower, but that's another sign that it's time to start picking them if they start putting off those stalks. The only thing that you wanna do is when you're harvesting your onions, keep the ones that have put off the flower stalk aside that way you know which are which, and after the curing process, you can put those ones to the forefront to make sure that they get eaten first, because they're not gonna last in your storage as long as the other onions will. Once you have all of your onions pulled out of the ground, at this stage, you're not gonna do anything to them. So you wanna take your onions and you're gonna set them somewhere to cure. To cure your onions, you're gonna want some place that they get good airflow, but not in the direct sun. So I'm setting them out here. I've got this old quail cage that we don't use anymore. And I'm just setting it here under my awning. And you just basically lay out your onions. These onions have been out here curing for a, just a little over a week and a half. And you can see the difference that it's got that typical onion skin that everybody's used to seeing in the grocery store. You can also see that the leaves have started to dry out a bit. 
at this stage is when I will remove the leaves. You can discard them if you want, but what I'm gonna do is anything that's still green, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna chop up, and I'm gonna put in the dehydrate. The trick to knowing when your onion is cured enough that it's going to store in your pantry is the leaves. So that's why I said when you cut off the leaves, whether or not you're doing it at the garden stage or at this stage, you want to give yourself at least two inches. Cut it off right there, and then you can see on the inside what it looks like. Now that you've trimmed that stalk, the inside is still green. And that is not what you want. Because if you don't check that, and if you try and put that onion away in storage now, even though it looks nice and dry on the outside, it's gonna rot from the inside because the inside is not completely cured. You want to cut that off and then leave it to cure for at least another week or so, but basically until that stalk is 100% dry. Keep in mind, there's nothing that says you cannot eat the onions as they are right now. The onions you're curing so that you can store them. It's a step that you do not have to do if you're going to consume them fresh out of your garden, or if you know that you're gonna be giving them away or selling them at a market or using them up within a month or two. This curing step, however, is crucial for long-term overwinter storage. If you don't do it, your onions are not going to survive. Now, like I just mentioned, you do not have to cure your onions if you're going to be selling them at market because usually when people come to a market to buy produce, it's going to be eaten fairly quickly. So you're not looking at long-term storage purposes. Your onions are going to be just fine. You can pick them, harvest them the day of market or the day before market and take them directly there and sell them to your customers. What's neat about that is it gives you a little bit of a leg up on any other competition at the market because when you pick them fresh out of your garden, they're going to have those nice lush onion greens to go with them and you can sell it as a whole at a little bit of a higher price because you're not just getting that single bulb, you're getting all of that leafy green that you can use for other dishes as well. So it's definitely a great crop to use for market. There's also no rule that says you have to cure your onions outside. You basically just need a space that's going to stay a certain temperature, not too hot, not too cold, keep a good airflow, air circulation, and allow them the time to dry out. Now you may have noticed that all of my onions are the yellow or white variety. For me personally, the red onions don't store as well. There's something about them, I'm not 100% sure what it is, that they just don't keep long-term storage as well as a white or a yellow onion will. This is one bed's harvest and I've got some over here in the garden bed you can still see there are some onions planted I ran out of space to cure them so I'm not gonna pick these guys until I have a place for them to cure when you are growing onions and you're choosing your varieties as far as what you want if you are picking a sweet onion variety the longer you cure it the less sweet it's going to be. So if you're picking a sweet variety to grow, I recommend not doing a large amount of them, doing something that you can consume over the course of the summer while they are fresh or sell them at the market. Now you can get some varieties that are semi-sweet. The two that I grew this year are the Highland onions and the Elsa Craigs. Highlands are your typical yellow onion. Elsa Craigs are a little bit of a sweeter onion. They get very, very big if you let them. I like them about the size of a softball, so I will pick them earlier than I should. I hope this video answered a lot of questions that you may have about growing onions, how to harvest them, how to store them, and all that fun stuff. I do honestly recommend that you put onions in your garden to try. They're a really fascinating plant to watch how they grow. Whether you start them from seed or you buy sets or starts, Get a couple onions in your garden and you'd be impressed with how much food you can get off of one single plant. Well, the sun is going down and I gotta go help pick some garlic scapes. We're gonna try doing some pickled garlic scapes, which I hopefully will be able to get a video for you guys and show you how we do that. It is a first time for me, so fingers crossed that it works out and that I like it. If not, it'd be a waste of some really good garlic scapes. Get some onions in the ground. Don't be afraid of them. I hope you guys grew some this year. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you grow your onions, if you do them similar to me, and what varieties that you prefer in your garden. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe. And remember guys, get your hands dirty.